guys been trying to get enough done to make a video here and it has been quite an ordeal just with my swaps and just free time for this but just to start with the intercooler here is in and mounted and I did have to notch around the grill some so I haven't quite got that fitting on perfect yet but the pipes go right through the the wall here really nice so that's good and more importantly after a bunch of work we have the engine in motor mounts are tacked in and it's about ready to pull it back out to finish welding those and just get this thing all together um, I've got to say this is probably the tightest fitting engine out of all three of them which is crazy with how much room is in this bay if you're gonna do a swap in one of these Chevys I would just go ahead and plan on moving the engine forward we're really trying to leave it in the stock location so we went to the work of just <laughs> pushing the firewall back almost two inches and um yeah trimming around the motor mounts here for that power steering pump and just getting room there so it is just really tight even with it fitting in here um we want to leave the stock drive lines though so they're easy to swap out at the ranch and we're just pretty remote here to start with so getting a drive line fixed after it gets damaged is not easy to do so we are going to go ahead and use these motor mounts i use in my other swaps they're a, just like a puck mount but they're rubber so they do absorb some they're they're nothing like using poly but um, the nice thing is they don't move hardly at all which is what we need here because it's kind of hard to see there but that power steering pump is about half an inch from the differential where the bottom of it comes out and then even after pushing the firewall back quite a bit that tandem pump is way back in there so it's about as snug as it could be and work uh, I can't remember where I was at last time but we did go ahead and pick up a DCS adapter plate, which is only an inch thick compared to the TD conversions kit. They just didn't have one in stock and I was tired of waiting, so we went with this. So that did hurt us a little bit as far as how much we had to push the firewall back. But it wouldn't have really affected the power steering pump, it still would have been right over the top of the differential but we did get it in there and everything looks good there's plenty of clearance for these mounts anyway and we're gonna go ahead and get this other motor mount in on the driver's side that way the air conditioner or i guess we're gonna put it into where there's room for the air conditioner we're not gonna mess with it right now but later on we definitely want to get that running since it is right there and easy enough to set up and the truck already had air conditioning so we'll do that later on get it running down the road first but that's pretty much where we're at so we'll go ahead and pull it back out finish all the welding uh, it needs a new oil pan and then we're going to reseal the tandem pump and the the coolant flange and it has the metal coolant flange there so get all that sealed up since we won't be able to get to it afterwards we're gonna do that right away and then get it in here and start hooking stuff up so pretty exciting to see it in there and as you can see there is plenty of room so it should be should be pretty fun although the coolant hoses are going to be very long <laughs> but that's just part of the deal so anyway just to give you guys an update that's where we're at and 
I made a little video kind of explaining how I make my motor mounts here. You can see them in case you guys are just kind of stuck on having to make those yourself. It's really not too hard. So I'll put that here at the end. So I was going to throw in a little tutorial here on making your own motor mounts. I did buy the engine side motor mounts from TD Conversions. Um, they're about a hundred bucks and honestly by the time you get done measuring the pipe and everything, I, maybe if I start doing this a lot I might start making the engine side myself too. But it's nice to be able to just have that part done. and. On the, on the frame side, I prefer, now that I've done a couple, to use C-channel just because it's so much stronger than this flat plate. I have gusseted clear out to here and still bent over here with my Jeep when I'm in four low. The torque these things put out is just incredible, so I'll probably end up having a gusset come clear out to here just to brace it. But this is just a simple bolt-through motor mount here. And I, I do like these mostly because in my cases where I'm trying to put it in the factory location, the, um, like the hydraulic mounts, they've got a stud on either side. And if you're tight clearance, a lot of times you don't have an inch of room to lift the engine up to be able to get the motor mounts out. So then you're trying to unbolt the whole motor mount from, from the engine and then get, taking that whole bracket off to get it out where these you just simply take the nut off the top and drop the bolt through and you can slide it out and be good to go but as you can see there's not much to the whole motor mount here and then if we look here we've got the TD conversions plate made and this side's pretty easy you just bend it and then set it flat there the other side is a little more complicated with the different spaced um, mounts or bolt holes so anyway if you take this and set it in here that's pretty much all there is to it tack it on to the frame side and the engine side and then get all your gussets in and like I say the nice thing with the C channel it's already really strong if you can get in and weld all the way around that you're not going to have much issues. I still may run, since this one's sticking out pretty far, run a gusset on this side. But then, as you can see on this other side here, the bolt holes are all different depths. And so you end up um, having to put some pipe in here and getting it all the right length. So I, you'll have at least an hour's worth of time making these mounts on the engine side. And for me, that's almost worth $100. We'll see. If I started mass producing them for myself, it might be worth it. But same thing on this side. And then specifically for this, um, this Chevy, I had to bring it forward as much as I could so that this starter can still slide out. And it just barely misses. So I couldn't come straight out with it or... I would have locked the starter in there for good. So, anyway, that is about it. You can see I've got a gusset tacked on here. And I'll probably do another one on the top up there. And that should be enough. It just, I mean, you can't put too many gussets on with, with how much these things can torque. This automatic shouldn't be near as stressful on the mounts. But, man, my Jeep can put some torque down. So anyway, if you're looking at just the, or worried about making your own mounts, that's about really all there is to it. Um, and not that you can't use the hydraulic mounts, and they would bolt in from the top and bottom the same way. Um, it's definitely an option if you have the room. I just don't have the clearance to be able to get them back out again for any time you're pulling the engine or something like that.
I'll stay tuned for the next video on this, guys. We'll hopefully be putting her together and at least getting a lot of the hoses and stuff routed. And we'll see. I'll probably have a whole video on the electrical, too. So we'll see how it comes along.